Okay team, here we go with the world editor tutorial. Uh, the world editor is a lot of new concepts, a lot of concepts which I sort of made up on the fly because I, I uh, couldn't think of any other ways to do it that were not computationally expensive for your phone and or for the file size. So what I basically did is uh, what I'm about to show you. So you go into the world editor by clicking on this world editor button here. All the icons turn blue to let you know that you are now in the world editor and they change to different things. A lot of the icons are repeat icons and that's because I'm a programmer and you know not so much an artist and you've probably realized that throughout the icons and the art throughout the whole application. But I promise before release, which I believe is going to be mid early September, I'm going to redo all these icons and they're just going to look so good. It's just going to, you'll all be so impressed. Okay, so first off, I'm going to show you these sort of one at a time. Um, the first one I'll show you is probably the most complicated, which is topography. Topography means the hills uh, of the land, basically. So, the topography system works by combining a whole lot of noise layers. A noise layer is just a repeating pattern where you decide do you want it to repeat over a large area, over a small area, and what's the amplitude, how high do you want the hills to be based off of that pattern. Um, the reason why I did it this way, well I'll, I'll explain that after, but here we go. We're, I'm going to show you how it works. You add a, a layer by hitting that blue plus sign I added, and then this dialog comes up. You've got a noise pattern type, a combination type, an amplitude, and a frequency. Here is what happens. It takes this parallel pattern, who I believe was the first person to come up with this notion, I think in the 90s. I think Tom Perlin? I don't know, don't quote me on that. I take that back, but maybe it's true. Um, a, this parallel pattern is basically just like a cloud pattern, and if I uh, raise the frequency and raise the amplitude, you can tell by cloud pattern I mean there's these rolling hills. There's sections that are tall and there's divots that are low. So if this were a black and white image where the tall points were white and the low points were black, then it would look kind of cloudy, like a bunch of clouds. So you can take this and you can make the pattern repeat over a small area. So you raise the frequency. Or you can make it repeat over a large area, so you've got much larger hills. And indeed, the amplitude is going to affect how tall or short these things are. So very tall, or you know, relatively tall, very high frequency is going to give you this sort of a, of a situation. The pattern, the noise pattern type, Right now there are only two types, the parallel, which is commonly used, and rigid, which is commonly used. Rigid is going to be basically just sharper points, and, and the divots in between are farther away. Actually, you know, real quick right now, I'll show you, I'll hop out of this, there's only the one layer, and I'll show you one other thing, this, the physics side of your world. Right now, it affects rate of gravity, which is going to affect the scene. Um, 9.8 is Earth, 14.7. Uh, is uh, Earth in terms of the atmospheric pressure. So the atmospheric pressure is right now only going to affect the fog in the scene, how much fog is in the world. So if I raise it all the way up, then you know there's a ton of fog and I really can't see squat because I'm so far away from the ground. But I'm gonna go ahead and raise it all the way down so that we can see what's going on. Um, by the time I release, the atmospheric pressure is going to affect everything in the physics environment from how a propeller operates or a wing to how things are slowed down um, to how, you know, whether a balloon wants to go up or explode, um, all these things. I turn the atmospheric pressure all the way down so that I can see. So now we can see all the way to the end and we can see this, the rigid, the rigid noise, like I said, is sharper points and there's a lot more space in between. So. The fun thing to do with topography is to combine these layers, and that makes it so that you can't really notice the repeating pattern. When you have a lot of different layers mixed together at varying frequencies and amplitudes, it's more difficult to identify the pattern. So here's a another parallel noise layer I'm going to add, and it's just going to be averaged in with the layer beforehand, and so we'll go kind of raise the raise the amplitude more so you can see it. So you can see how now this layer is being mixed in with the uh, with the rigid layer before and it's being averaged in. We can say, well we'll keep these two as average so I can show you a really good example. So now we've got two layers. One's rigid, it's average, here's its amplitude, here's its frequency. One's parallel, it's averaged in, same thing. Now we're going to add another rigid layer 
and I'll set it to subtraction. And I will lower it to a certain point. So you can see now, if I raise the amplitude up, it's actually pulling it down to the ground more and more. So now the ground is flat here because the, the noise layer of the rigid noise is subtracting from the other two layers. And it's subtracting it so much that it's bringing it all the way to the bottom, that it, the bottom most that it can be. So if we raise it up and or rather lower the amperage to zero, it's going to subtract zero. Um, I'm going to do it a little bit so it kind of looks like there's some kind of maybe river valleys or something. Yeah, that's what I like, river valleys. And lastly, I guess I'll add one more rigid layer that is going to be addition. And now it's sort of going to be competing with the, with the previous layer, which is subtracting. So for that reason, I'm going to really add the, the uh, amplitude. And I'm going to lower the frequency to like that, I think is great. It's fantastic. OK, now, before I get into how we paint the textures to look the way we want, I just want to mention one thing. If I bring the camera to the edge of the world, and while you're playing things, the world ends, right? But the world is not going to end in the actual release. What's going to happen is by the time you get over here, it's going to delete everything from over here on this side that's very, very far away from you. And it's going to keep those patterns going the way you defined them in the settings. And they're just going to keep repeating on and onward in this way. So what I'm saying is in the release, there will be no edge to any of the worlds. They'll just keep going. So for that reason, these few sets of numbers, all these numbers combined, make up this entire uh, world, this entire endless world. And that's why I've decided to do it that way. So that way, you've got a whole world that has no end. You can create all sorts of planes, fly around in flight simulation mode forever, and have a, just a fantastic time. OK, so the ground textures. This is another sort of confusing part. Um, so I'll cover it now. The ground textures work by default like this. There's one texture. And right now, it's this one, these lines. Um, how, how this is going to work is the bottom most the bottom most texture is going to be what is at the bottom of the world, where it's flat here. This is the bottom of the world. Nothing goes lower than this. Or it's going to be where there's a lot of cliffs, where the cliff angle is past a certain point. So here's a better explanation of that. If I change this to grass, then it's saying everything at the bottom is going to be rock. This should be rock. It must be slightly above the bottom. And the rest of it is going to be grass. So here's the rock at the bottom. Here's the grass right here. But you can sort of see in the background, there's, this, there's some rock coming through here, right? So how that works is it says if the angle of the ground is between 0 degrees, like this, and 90 degrees, we're going to decide when to put that rock texture. So right now, I can say if the angle of the ground is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, then default to our rock texture. The rock texture is always the very first one. And that means basically no matter what, it's going to be rock. If it's anywhere between 0 degrees, flat, and totally vertical, I want it to be rock. So you're saying, I want everything to be rock. So by this setting, you're basically saying ignore all these other settings. Um, that's why it starts sort of in the middle. So it says if it's somewhere between this angle and this angle, then I want it to be rock. And you can sort of play around with this. So that's going to mean whatever these other layers are saying, we're going to replace it with the bottommost layer. OK, now let's get into the actual the rest of these layers so I can really explain what's going on. I think the maximum is 5 or 6. I can't remember, although I programmed it, so I should be able to. So what I'm going to say now is this. I'm going to add a couple more layers. I'm going to make this one snow. I'm going to make the one before it also snow. And this is because I want total control over where this is going to be layered. So now I'm basically saying from about halfway up to the rest of the way, I want everything to be snow. And from the very bottom, or near to the bottom, come on, computer. Sorry, my computer is from 1984. OK, so from the very bottom to around here, we want it to be grass. I think that's a little too much snow. I'm going to raise this up. Little less snow, because it's a little cold out there. More grass up here. OK, so yeah, I think that's good. And the rocks are still going to emerge through the snow because we told them to. We said, hey, at this angle between, I don't know, maybe 30 degrees and maybe 60 degrees, which is a pretty steep angle, uh, yo, give me that rock. So this is effectively the, uh, 
yeah, the ground the ground texture is a it's a little complicated. It's very likely one of you is going to give me just a solid idea, and it's gonna and it's gonna change um, for how for how we go about actually coloring these. Last thing, a pretty easy thing, pretty simple part is the background textures. C click on this. I'm gonna give you a whole lot more options. These are really hard to produce. Um, I found a couple free ones, which I'm going to in production. When the beta is done, I'm going to link up to where I found them. Um, or I'm going to try to produce a lot more, which, you know, because I'm a programmer, takes takes me a long time. But uh, like this one I produced, and it's by far the most terrible one because I, it, I just didn't spend enough time on it. So I'm going to make better space ones and better cloud ones and, and yada, yada, yada. But that just changes the background world. And actually, I'll, I'll turn the atmospheric pressure back to somewhere around Earth, which is 14 point second or 14.7 pounds per square inch. And when you change the background textures, let's say I go with this, it's also going to change the fog color to sort of match the background texture. Um, another thing to consider is throughout this entire world we've been building, it's hard, you, you sort of lose track of how far away you are. And so just to give you some perspective, if we add the guy and let him fall, then we realize just how big those, those noise hills are. They're quite big. So what looks, if you bring the camera really high and zoom really far out, what looks like a tiny hill is actually going to end up being, you know, a pretty large, a pretty large hill.